Hey, welcome to another episode of the uh, the Rook Mix. And this week we have uh, our friend Melissa Tencredi. Many of you know her as um, many time Olympian. Uh, she bagged a couple of bronze medals, and um, but I've gotten to know her over the last couple of years because she's an amazing physician. She's a doctor of chiropractic. Uh, I get to see her uh, whenever she has openings, and uh, she's amazing and um, a very funny individual and interesting and. Just, uh, she's a good one. So um, we're pretty psyched to have her on. And this um, this is actually, the, you're gonna see the second time we had her on because the first time was with Chris and myself and um, let's just call that the lost tape session. Maybe we'll recover that sometime in the future and uh, it'll be a collector's item. But uh, so the one you're gonna see is, uh, is uh, I already knew a lot of information, so we kind of took it from there and ramped it up a bit, but it's just my conversation with uh, Melissa and me. So there you go, and uh, enjoy, and then afterwards, Chris and I are going to make our mixtape. So so yeah, buckle up, and here we go. All right. um, well, here we go. Um, hey, so when we talked to you last, you, we, yeah. um, one of the questions I asked you was like the last concert you went to, and Justin Timberlake came up. And we were talking about some other customer or, or, or concerts um, that you've went to in your life, but I kind of want to know when when COVID is over and we can return to life, who do you really want to see? Yeah, this is on my no matter what list, Adele for sure. I think she and she's the one artist that I will pay no matter what for. I will literally give anything I need to to get to her concert, but she's definitely the only one on my list right now. Oh, that is the one. Jeez yeah, Louise. She's, That's, she's and is she, is she, is she going to perform again? Like, you know, she's, she's right? just a mystery woman. Like it, I think it's part of the master plan where she just wants to drop off the face of the plan a little bit, a little bit of privacy and come back. And, and, uh, her, it's an interesting reinvention, you know, like, I know, you know, you know, like, uh, I don't know, because I remember seeing interviews of her early on and, and I remember at a recording studio and, um, and you know she's smoking the cigarettes and obviously super unhealthy. And now it's like, oh, well, that's a bit of a change. I know. And think about what story she's going to tell in this next album, right? <laughs> I know. I think her marriage fell apart and all. all I know. Good stuff. So you know that being said, um, like a good friend of mine, um, and uh, we've talked to him before, but I always ask him like, uh, "Oh, you haven't been writing much?" And he's like, "Well, it's because I'm happy." You know, and so we need, she needs every three years or something to go horrifically wrong. And, I know. And I we, get the, we get the benefit. Um, what about, um, do you have any inclination to see a festival? You know, are you that type of a person? Or do you have any inclination, like apart from Adele, because we know that's number one on your list, to go to Ibiza for a weekend? Ooh. The only thing, Brad, that I'm worried about is my energy level without you know, having drugs or alcohol support that. <laughs> I feel yeah. like I, I can never, like, for example, I think it's Pemby Fest. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Like, or anything where you sleep over and camp, I think I would be done. Like I'm a one, if I'm going for a three day festival, I go like, for example, Lollapalooza, I would go great time, go home, sleep in my own bed, possibly repeat the next day. But yeah. That, I mean, I'm getting old. That's a hard one for me. That's a hard one. Well, I know because when you're young and we talked about it before, I'm like, my first ever concerts were, uh, got to see three or four bands, got to get my money's worth. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm good for like an hour and a half. Let's, let's just get this done, you know? Even in the concerts where you see one artist, you're like always on your feet the whole time. And by the end of it, you're like, couldn't have done longer. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I do not have face. Hey, one other thing, um, uh, I'm sorry I'm on this question so long, but uh, I'm kind of curious, and it's more of like a, I just remember, because I was going through concerts in my mind, I saw Prince, and uh, when I was in high school, when I was 16 years old, so I'm much older than you, but it was the uh, the um, Purple Rain Tour, and it was Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens, and the reason why I asked you this question is that I come from such a small town where there isn't a lot of arts, there is not a lot of openness, and I actually remember going to see Prince and actually thinking to myself, this is allowed, you know, in terms of a man yeah. in heels, yeah. dancing, sexually ambiguous. And, and I actually, I think I sat with that for months, you know, if not longer of like, 
was that okay? Like, it's almost, was that okay what I saw? Of course it yeah. was, but uh, I'd never seen that before. I'd never been introduced to it. We didn't have the internet back then. So how would I even know, you know, what, what Prince is really like, you know? I saw him in a movie, I, you know, you see a video clip, which is, um, which is, I guess I should have had some insight. I'm wondering for you, um, was there any singer that, uh, or band that you go, oh, things could be different. Like any, like had such an impact on you. That's a great question. I think, and I've not never even thought of this, but it's definitely Rihanna. Her, I saw her in Chicago, I think it was 2014. And her stage presence and her, she had a see-through stage and she had fans underneath. Like it was almost like a plexiglass. And yeah. the things that she was doing to that plexiglass and the fans that were underneath and what they were seeing. And then what we were seeing, I was like, whoa, this is like entertaining to a different level. I've never seen, that was the first concert where I was like, that's an entertainer. Like it was like, just captured you, right? And then you're like, whoa, this is X-rated. Whoa, should I be watching this? Whoa, this is, I can't stop looking. And then by the end of it, you had a huge crush on her. So yeah. that by far is probably the top concert where I felt that way. That's amazing. I hadn't, so where you were seated, they actually had like cameras where you could see like different views and. Yeah, even the camera guy was underneath the plexiglass. So you're getting the same view as everyone else underneath. Oh. That yeah. is so rad. All right. Um, <laughs> Spicing it up. <laughs> that threw me off. That's great. Okay. Now, I asked you a question before, and it was like, who you would be in a band? And, you know, you said, I'd either be the drummer or I'd be the lead singer. And, and I, I did laugh at the time, but I did inwardly because, you know, I, I think about when you Google Melissa Tancredi and you see an image or two, the one that pops up all the time is where you're like this close to that. Uh, the woman's wearing a gold and is it Sweden? Australian. Australia. <laughs> I'm like, big shocker that she would be the drummer. Like, you're yeah. not going to be the keyboard player just <laughs> tinkling the ivories. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. So no big shocker, drummer, lead singer. Okay. What, what is the name of your band? Oh man, I'm, I'm in between two. I'm in between the shower singers and I'm in between, I'm probably there's someone out there named the same thing, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say the unknowns. The unknowns are the shower singers. Okay. We're a really great karaoke band. That's what I'm picturing. I, I think the shower yes. singers is the, is the big winner then for sure. Uh, covers all night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what do you, Okay, so covers all night. That's what you're playing. That's your, that's, you have no originals. Maybe that's the name of our band. Covers all night. <laughs> covers all night, <laughs> and no country. We've established that, oh, right? I mean, Shania. I mean, the, we can go a little old school, but then mostly modern country. I feel like, but nothing too folky. Not, nothing too twangy. I can't. Okay, hey, but part of your professional career, you did uh, live in southern states. Did you know you play in Houston for a bit? Uh, I played against Houston, never lived there. I lived in Georgia, oh. so lived in Atlanta, outside of Atlanta. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that isn't the heart of country. That's that's more urban, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Because um, I just got my, I got my fill of country when I went to tennis, or uh, uh, to, um, to Nashville. And um, I'll do it. I, I fell in love with it because of the fact everyone has so much fun. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I've heard that country festivals are the best festivals to go to. They're very, like, it's just everyone's having a good time. And I'm amazed that, you know, especially in Nashville, we're going out for breakfast at 10 in the morning. There's a band, given her, already in the restaurant. And uh, and half the people are singing along. They know every word of the song. And I just thought, this is really fun. Yeah, not there. So, yeah. um, okay. Now, you painted a great picture. I almost feel like I should be in film because once you paint this picture, I just run with it, of you growing up. Okay. Italian, Italian, Italian. But you said you had this house with an intercon system, and which I love because all I see is your your mom. Have you eaten yet? Have you eaten? You know, um, and but were, was music played through the intercom or was it just her her constantly like, <laughs> where's everybody? What I want to talk. Honestly, she was probably upset at the music went off, so music was always on, all yeah. constantly. And if they and wanted. She, 
you would pause the music, you would pause the music across and they would call you or talk to you. This is such a good house. Oh my God. Um, so tell us what was the music in that house? Because your mom had good taste. She had great taste. I mean, my mom loves the Beatles. I personally am not a fan, but she loves the Beatles. Um, a lot of it was like in excess, like I, I talked about Mix 99.9. So it was like, yeah. Rod, a lot of Rod Stewart, Tom Petty, In Excess, Guns N' Roses. I mean, it, it just like, it was so, it was kind of like the smooth rock, like smooth, soft rock kind of genre time. And everyone loved that music at that time as well. So a little bit, yeah. not my genre, obviously as a kid, but I kind of grew up to that and loved it. And my mom loves music. Like she's, it, it's in her, in her veins and her dad loves music as well. So just kind of passed on to us. She loved music and was she a dancer? Did she pass on the dancing gene or was that your dad? Yes. My dad and mom, they do this dance where they put their knee, they interlock their knees and they kind of go down to the floor together. Look your face, look at your face. <laughs> just awesome. There goes mom and dad, they just interlock their knees and just kind of waver on down and come on back. Yeah, loved it. It's kind of like the twist, but no twist. It, there must be arms interlocked too. Oh yeah, they were like holding okay. on. To okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wow, this sounds like a bit of Russia in there. Jeez. Oh yeah, my grandparents are phenomenal dancers. You know Italians, they just all know, I mean, they've been married already for 50 years. So they know every, where every foot's gonna go and where, every, where he's gonna swing me next. Man, they were just, they'd rip up a dance floor. I love it. So, so you were talking about the household we got that program with mom, kind of a softer, easygoing rock, but you know, there's some in excess there. You mentioned that when you're going to elementary school, because I was asked what influences stuff that you heard and how you broke out in your own. And uh, when you're going to elementary school is the grunge phase, which once again is a classic picture because I was in university at the time. So uh, of course we were, we were dressed in our flannel and there was angst, but I'm just like these kids, flannel full of angst. I'm like, come on. Uh, what songs in particular from that time, the grunge period, do you still hold on to? That you go, oh, that's definitely going to be on a mix, like, um, or in, well, I guess vice versa. Well, don't tell me the ones that don't make it, but which ones still stay with you? Uh, oof, all Apologies, Nirvana. Yeah. Uh, collective Soul Gel. Um, oof, anything Offspring, Bad Habit, huge favorite. Um, I was obsessed with uh, Trent Reznor, always saying hurt, you know, did my little air bands to that. Um, Hole, yeah. um, anything group assault. So these were like, honestly, anything during that time that was popular, moist, love David Usher. These are- Oh my God, you knew, uh, sorry, I, I, I guess, obviously you knew Moist, but it's such a Canadian band and I almost forgot about them, but I, I listened to them in one entire summer, David Usher, that was, uh, that was good. And what was the, I forget the other one that was really big, um, and he was a babe as well, the lead singer, but another Canadian band at that time that was big time. And I used to play it on my Walkman. I, the names, do you know what I'm talking about? The, the I name, wonder if it, it was, was it Our Lady Peace, maybe? Oh my God! There it is. What was that one song? Clumsy. Clumsy. Yep. Our Lady Peace. Woo. Was that was that the one with the great video of the schoolroom of, of the Yeah. That was a that was a big song. So good. Those are and I can remember I would my dad would always take me along to clean his house. He builds houses. So I'd go and clean and I'd have my walkman on and just cleaning to Our Lady Peace on my on my walkman, <laughs> trying to pass the three hours he just left me there. So, <laughs> good song, good tunes back then. What's the statute of limitations on children's services? <laughs> I know. Yeah, 13 at least. <laughs> hey, um, and I, I'm pretty sure as you, but I, I thought in one of your Insta stories, God, it makes me sound like a creep, but there was a picture of you, maybe it's a throwback Thursday picture, of you and your sister going out for Halloween. Were you not dressed up as a group of some sort, or was it just... Just another another it day. Like a group, but we were definitely just thrown together. Whatever was in our trickle tickle trickle, whatever was in our tickle trunk at that time. Yeah, I don't think it was a group, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it looked like you were like 
you guys are going to do a dance routine. You're going to go out as a, as a, as some type of a group. I'm like, I don't know if there's bandanas, but there was definitely some, some, uh, almost Miami vice colors in there, you know, <laughs> <laughs> big wigs, bandanas, somebody yeah. has glasses on for sure. <laughs> um, so when, when I say, uh, well, I'm, you have a, a couple of siblings, but I know you're close to your sister. I guess that's the picture I saw, but let's play song association. When, when I say your sister, which song do you think of straight away? Ooh, um, uh, what's well, time to say goodbye? Oh, 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 bye. To say goodbye. You know, oh, my. <laughs> my sister, You're so talented. <laughs> sides of that so talented, <laughs> so talented. <laughs> wow the shower singers are going to do well <laughs> thing that like no one i've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> okay what about your wife julia what's the song oh what she gets wife status already wow i'm gonna call her distant friend right now um <laughs> what does Julia loves this one song called, Sv I'm going to butcher it. In English, it says Svag, S-V-A-G. I think it's called Svaye, whatever. Um, and that would be the song that she and I probably, it's a sweeter song. It's really good, actually. Look it up. Um, and did you discover that while living over there? Well, no, it's just she started singing it when she actually was here I think for during quarantine, she was playing it all the time. And I was like, what song is that? It's actually good. And she was like, oh, it's this one. So now I'm like obsessed with it. It's by Victor Lexel. And it's, I think it's called pronounced Svai, Sva but it's Svag. <laughs> it sounds better. Svag <laughs> sounds better. You worked really hard in your Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, fell off of that a little bit. My Duolingo goes a little, my app's done. <laughs> Okay, and um, and you know, I I think a lot of Canada um, has this kind of love affair with John Herdman, and you know we don't know him too well. We know him from sound bites, but you know, uh, whenever I listen to him, and you know what? To be honest with you, well, I was I was never I never followed women's soccer, um, and then John came along, and of course we we watched you guys through the Olympics. But that's when you kind of see it because there wasn't a whole lot of television coverage. He came along and was like, oh, what's going on? You know, and then just his enthusiasm, like, oh, I think I'm enthused, uh, I'm enthused about this team. And then you start watching, like, and then you guys build it on your own because of the fact that it was so bloody entertaining. And we went through so many, uh, so many great games with you and, and then you're hooked forever. But he was my initial entry into becoming a women's soccer fan. Um, and that's just an aside. Um, but what's the song? Uh, when I say John Herman, what do you think of a, for a song? Anything dance music and anything fist pumping dance music. Yeah, you think? Herman <laughs> and his tight jeans just and his tight Tom Ford outfit and just doing it, you know? He, he doesn't have a mellow button, does he? No, I, I mean, I've never seen it. <laughs> and if he's put it on, if he's pressed that button, he's definitely planning something, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a setup, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, when we talked before, no secret, you love Celine Dion, you love Barbara Streisand, but, um, and I just thought, okay, that's, uh, that's just in your wheelhouse, but you told us, and I thought this is a brilliant story, you told us about um, London Olympics, as I was kind of getting at, you know, what, what song do you think of when you think of London Olympics and, and that crazy run that you guys had, but you, you mentioned that um, you liked her before, but, um, she inspired you guys and how did that come to be? Yeah, so that was the, after the big loss to the US in the semifinals, obviously devastated. Um, our whole team was just shot mentally and physically as well. And I think we traveled with a forensic psychologist and he worked with the All Blacks at the time. And I think him and our coaching staff were like, how do we get this group like going? We have a game in two days, a bronze medal match, right? So they started pulling from social media and finding inspirational quotes from people that watched our game against the US and people, you know, sending us well wishes. And I mean, the prime minister was on there and Celine Dion was one of them as well. And I think, 
you know, seeing these people and, and seeing that they watch the game and, or, or they are tuning into the next game and wishing us good luck. I mean, some of them, your idols growing up, it's just pretty incredible. And I feel like that team just, you know, we went on emotional fumes that last game to win that bronze medal, left it until the last minute of the game. So. I mean, oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> that was crazy. And that's with the, uh, as I've told you before, when we talked before, it's like, that's when the, the woman that worked at CTV or something like that, she's uh, she came running in and it's like, the little, the little one scored. <laughs> she didn't know Diane's name. And I'm like, oh my God. And I, as you know, I can't remember Diane's name usually. I'm like, the little one. <laughs> yeah, the little one, always. Oh, Diana, yes, yes. I know <laughs> so what was, uh, what was the, what was the song that you, you would associate with the London Olympics? Is it a Celine song or what was your team song? So the team album, the album, I was just thinking about this actually, the album I'd associate with the Olympics because we'd always travel, right? We're always on a bus traveling, even like to practice, to games, always traveling, was Fun, the band Fun. Okay. Band Fun. No, I'm, I'm gapping this, okay. They had, a, they had a, I don't know if they had more than one album. Um, Tonight. Yeah, okay, got it, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they sang those songs. That album, always on repeat on our rides to and from training and some games. But the song that I will always bring me back to tears a little bit is Power of Love by Celine because that's the song, I mean, our whole team, management, president of CSA, we're all arm in arm, just belting that out top of our lungs. You know, we had just won the bronze medal and yeah, still gives me a little bit of shivers now thinking about it. That's so awesome. Um, and totally off, to well, on topic, but off topic, but um, I always find it amazing that if you were to get to the gold medal game and if you lose the gold medal game, you get the silver, it's like, oh, but you actually win your last game when you win bronze, you know? I like to think of it that way as well. It's gold or bust, but I'll take bronze because you, you end on a high, right? So you most certainly do. Yeah. So you get to get to enjoy this closing ceremony is like super happy as opposed to despondent at all, you know? So I, whatever. Um, I don't know that I still, I actually get goosebumps thinking about that because that was such a crazy to watch, especially that, that semifinal game. And just like, you know, I, I don't think I've uh, come that close to throwing something at the TV. <laughs> like it was just wild. And then, and then that final game was just right to the end. Yeah. That crazy. Shouldn't have won it, but <laughs> <laughs> was looking up for us. <laughs> you should have won the other one. Anyways. Um, so Locker rooms, we were talking about that and you were um, you were talking about Stephanie Le LeBay. Um, usually puts together the playlist, uh, controls the music. Um, over the years, you've had a long run with her. You guys were both on the team for quite some time. What songs of the playlist seem to survive, you know, over eight years or 12 years, you know? Are there any or did it always change or there's- Always changes. Oh, really? There's no one go-to. Oh, that's the beauty of it, right? Like you'll have, yeah. and I think that's what's cool because there's a whole season dedicated to one playlist. Yeah. So you kind of never have the same season's playlist for the next year. Fresh start. Okay. How about you working out like today? What's your go-to that you're like, I got to get pumped up. This has to happen. Like, I know for me, it's like, you know, for some reason, Eminem, you know, like if I need to, like, if I really need to, uh, a go-to song, it's like, that would be it. And then, um, and then I have this secret weird love of some punk rock, uh, which is, I know, a little atypical for me, but uh, back when I was competing in windsurfing and kiteboarding, for some reason, I had this cassette tape in the car that was face-to-face, uh, -face, and I actually really like that band, and every time I put that on, I'm ready to go. Like, as soon as you step out of the car, you're like, okay, it's go time. Do you have today a go-to? I think I would say anything salsa merengue. That's like <laughs> your friend Selenia mentioned. That. <laughs> they all, everyone that knows me knows this about me. If it, it's that's always on the pregame and that's always in my routine if I want to get pumped up. No, no questions asked. Um, I think right before I go out on the field, it's something a little bit more like a little stronger, like Andre Day, like something like that, like where you're like more of a. <laughs> no offense to all the other singers, but more of a 
a stronger voice that really like yeah. kind of vocal that gets yeah. into, gets into here and then you're feeling it and you go out in the field road trip oh uh is it is it generally an album you're like uh, let's just say you're driving a, a four-hour drive you are going to um the interior or something like that are you are you packing like full albums or is it are you are you going to a, a mixed playlist and and what are the musts that or what are the ones that seem to always surface when you're hitting the road for like a, a good road trip you can ask julia she gets <laughs> she's tired of road trips with me she's taken over the music because with me it's always a down it's always go to spotify this is a down literally the whole thing a down and then by the end of the road trip she's like no we can't so now julia's taken over and she actually creates playlists now and she's just she's all over the place so you can have like whitney houston you can go to something swedish you can go back to mariah carey bashy boys like she's literally all over the place she's actually a good playlist maker i'll give it to her that's a great person to have in your in your corral i love that <laughs> and i can't believe it took us this long to mention mariah i know Jeez, that we always a major miss my goodness well, it's on my playlist <laughs> um okay we're about to wrap it up but um i know you told us because i i'm i asked you about the you know, one of your first championships or the burlington sting in 1999 canadian championship and i actually forget but you mentioned a song that was that was for that team but also it was the prom the next day what was the song uh, Whitney Houston, your love is my for sure. Yeah, awesome. That's lovely. Um, and one question that I just thought of. So oh. if you if you can, if you can't get it, then then that's totally fine. But if there is, um, you know how baseball players when they're about to walk to home plate, the DJ guy plays like a song. It's like their song, you know. Or if you're going to go on a talk show, and it's like. Uh, welcome to the stage, Melissa Tancredi. <laughs> what, is, what do you wish to be your song? The the song where you could like, you know, kind of salsa out to. <laughs> exactly. Elvis Presley. Suavemente, all day long. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. And, you know, as soon as I halfway through the question, I'm like, it's going to be salsa merengue. Yeah. <laughs> this has become very predictable now. <laughs> I have it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> hey, um, and last question. Um, uh Christy's usually here and we usually ask this question together but what kind of a what kind of a mixtape are we making for you I'm gonna still go with the patio smooth yeah. patio listening okay smooth patio listening fantastic um thank you very much my friend no problem thanks for seeing you seeing you again thanks for seeing you again thanks for having me nice <laughs> seeing you again hopefully we don't want to do a third time Brad oh no 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 this is it we're done we're good all right well, Melissa essentially gave us two interviews and you saw the second one with just um, herself and I. And so she asked for a patio mix, uh, a mellower patio mix. And um, we'll, we'll see what we can do because mellow is not exactly our wheelhouse, but she gave us lots of clues and lots of references. And so here we go with Chris and my selections for the Melissa Tancredi patio mix. Okay. so. Um, the patio mix, it's, it's, it isn't crystal clear because the fact that Melissa wanted, you know, patio mix mellow, but at the same time, when you're on the patio, you get three drinks in the vibe changes. 100%. So yep. I, I like your selections and we'll get to them, but, um, cause uh, you know, when I first saw, uh, one of your selections, like that's not going to work. And I thought three drinks in, that's going to be perfect. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of a, I may be later in the later in the game type of thing, although I've got I've got a couple breezy ones just to uh, just to, uh, you know, for the first couple drinks, let's say. <laughs> well, OK, I'll go first. Yeah, and please. This is courtesy of my my friend's daughter who uh, who sees me and my musical consultant for 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 music that I don't have a clue about, which is most recent stuff and Pink Pony Club. And I'm not sure how to say the woman's name, Chappelle Rowan or Chapel Rowan, but um, it made me think of Melissa because of the fact that it's a story of a girl from Missouri who sets out 
and she ends up in West Hollywood um, and has her eyes opened after she goes to the Abbey, which is like this, this famous gay bar down there. And, um, and like it, kind of, it, it allowed her to just live her life. And I just, I, I think of Melissa because of the fact that she was on the road so much, you know, in terms of like uh, playing competitive soccer at an early age, leaving for school, living in Indiana, you know, South Bend, Indiana. And, um, and I know she loves her family dearly, goes home as much as possible. But at the same time, it's like she had to go out there on her own. And this is about self-discovery and getting out there and, and going for it. And um, it, it's an amazing song. It has great lyrics, you know. Um, and I heard there's a special place where boys and girls can all be queens every single day. And, uh, and I heard that the first time in the car when I was with my friend's daughter. I'm like, that is a, that's a special go. line, you know. So, so that one. I love it. It's a good little, I don't know if we'll, it'll start off the mix, but uh, it definitely is a, is a happy song. Are you shocked to know that I'm not familiar? <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll be on repeat soon, as soon as you introduce yourself to it. No kidding. I'll, I'll, <laughs> um, the, the first one I threw out um, was uh, Haim's uh, Summer Girl. I'm a huge Which fan is amazing. of that. They're just a kick-ass girl band girl band of superb and supremely uh talented musicians three sisters and um and and that's very much in the mellow stream of what they produced they um they they rock out they're a fantastic band but that one there was something about the um the sax riff that really appealed to me and it feels patio-ish yeah it does and you know um i love to do my research on everything and um one of you, they have great videos and do you do you know why well i mean there's a, there's a bunch of reasons probably why but uh but hit me paul thomas anderson is a good friend of theirs okay. and he and because of the fact that the girl's mother was his art teacher oh wow i know Jeez. what a connection so he loves doing their videos yeah <laughs> so there you go <laughs> Nice one, nice one. <laughs> Where uh, it, uh, I think that fits. I think I think that 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 pick, it, it goes with 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 the vibe. And uh, I'm so glad Melissa picked that theme because I don't think that's one that I would have grabbed out of the air. I think that's a it's it's a great opportunity for us. Yeah, um, she mentioned, and um, in my second conversation with her, um, and she probably said it when we were talking to her earlier when we were talking about the London Olympics. And you know Celine Dion, Dion came up, but actually she reminded me that they had like an an album or a group that was their group for the Olympics, and it was fun. And okay. I, I, I uh, she stopped me because she said, "You know, fun." I'm like, mm, "No, I don't." And she sang a little bit. I'm like, mm, "Yeah, totally." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got me. So this one. Uh, and I can just see this is some night, and and once I heard it, like I've I've known their two most popular songs in a big way because it got played a lot on pop radio. But this one is definitely a team song because it it starts and then it has these building drums, and you could just see like you know getting jacked, and then it goes down again, and then it builds again, and um, you can just see like. Um, uh, the girls getting pumped up because uh, part of the lyrics is this is it boys this is war what are we waiting for and right. you know come on like so that's uh it, it just makes absolutely 100 percent sense that um that this would be a, a good theme song for, for the london olympics for the team so so that was an eye-opener for me because I, I had heard fun but i most certainly had forgotten them as soon as that summer is over i can assure you <laughs> and, and a word for word uh um sentence steal from 99 love balloons oh absolutely yes this is it boys this is war. yeah absolutely yeah gosh that one's coming back can we include that in every one of our podcasts or a little I, nina i think we're going in that direction because <laughs> there's a few others that are getting repeated <laughs> <laughs> so uh what, what do you got next you know thinking about thinking about uh um Melissa, just being a, a representative of the country, I, I did draw quite a bit from the Canadian music scene, not from the contemporary music scene, 
only one selection or two, maybe three are, are, are more contemporary, but I did lean heavily on Canadian artists just to, uh, just to, to wave the flag uh, in my own way and, and to connect uh, her experience. Uh, to some of the songs that I could see being played in the patio, but um, I went with um, Stompa by um, Serena Ryder, which has got a good, good kick. It's got a good, uh, it's got a good beat and you can dance to it, as, <laughs> as they said on SCTV. Um, but uh, uh, I, I, I like Serena's work and, uh, and uh, I think it's a, I think it's a cool song. I think it would work. Um, I think it would work on a patio. Well, and it shall. <laughs> hey, um, when we talked to her about uh, growing up uh, elementary school where she's mm. finding her own identity, she mentioned the grunge years. And yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> when I talked to her the second time, I'm like, a kind of a funny image because you and I grew up in the grunge years with like, you know, university days and or, or later university days, I guess. But, uh, you know, it would be nothing for us to walk around in, in flannel and flannel uh, and, uh, you know, have a bit of a, a nasty attitude, but how about ten-year-old kids? <laughs> you know, like being all despondent. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, uh, you know, in uh, you know, she 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 grew up in a pretty lovely part of uh, Ontario over there, and uh, you know, adjacent to the Hammer, which I'm sure had its own bit of influence too. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting little uh, poke that she was getting into that at uh, at at, uh, at a fairly young age. I know. So uh, both conversations, she mentioned Hole. So uh, I went with Hole and uh, Malibu. And uh, I, I quite like this song. And um, interesting fact, Courtney Love wrote this song and her dream was to have Stevie Nicks sing it. She wow. had no intention of singing it or probably had an intention, but she, <laughs> uh, she definitely tried to get Stevie Nicks to, uh, to sing it. And I'm not sure if there was ever a returned email or call, but, uh, but that was the, uh, that's the inside scoop on that one. So, so there you go. A little bit of uh, a little bit of Courtney love for you. Fantastic, good pick. Where are you going? Um, I I really dug deep into the into the bag. Another Canadian, uh, another Canadian song. I, th I it's 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 uh, it's got a little bit of a breezy vibe to it, in in uh, in um, in the way it rolls over. But uh, um, I went with uh, Carol Pope's uh, band Rough Trade with all touch and no contact, um, which was really kind of a, that was me taking a stab at a soccer reference, to be honest with you. Um, why is it, why is it that, that uh, in women's soccer, they never dive? They take you a know, good beating on each other and there's no diving at all, at all. Okay. I know, and that's funny because they're, they're tough as nails. And I, it, it reminds me that, there was an Instagram meme coming around when people started to get vaccinated. So it was this cartoon and it was the soccer player getting it vaccinated or the aftermath of it. And he's rolling on the ground. I laugh. So I send it to Melissa. She says, that's not a woman. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Did you I, ever I, cross paths with uh, Carol? Oh, many times. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah booked her in in Ottawa. Um, uh, twice that I can remember, but, um, I did have her, um, uh, for a quick paper interview for, I'm forgetting which paper it was the, the charlatan or the resin where I did some, uh, music work. And, um, and I, I knew her from the Toronto scene anywhere. Uh, anyway, I'd seen rough trade a whole bunch of times. I was happy that, uh, that she'd make the trip to Ottawa. It was in that sort of in the triangle where she covered Montreal too. Rough trade was very popular in Montreal as well. So it made sense to do sort of a Thursday show in, in Ottawa for a Friday or yeah. Saturday night show in, um, in Montreal. And I, I always found her, um, really funny and engaging and, uh, and, uh, super talented and just, uh, you know, I think um, a, a, a musical icon, and uh, but she had a, she had a she had a tough humor about her, and she was just one of these fantastic women in music who just took shit from nobody. Mm -hmm. Presented her work in a very honest way. She wasn't an apologist for it, and um, and she was so important to the music scene in the late seventies in Toronto. I think she did everybody in Canada a favor. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's lots of women, and uh, and. Um men and women came after her should owe her a big fat favor oh. for paving the way no question 
Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, remember um, when we asked Melissa about concerts in the last concert she saw, Justin mm -hmm. Timberlake, and we had a good conversation about that. And, uh, and then, so I, I couldn't ask her that question again, but I, I prefaced, I said, obviously, you know, I know your last concerts and I know uh, you had fun at the Commodore. I'm like, where would, who would you most like to see as soon as this COVID business is over and straight away Adele? Pay any amount of money to see Adele. Number one or less. Wow. No one, nothing gets in the way. Uh, drop everything to see her. And, um, and so I threw on Chasing Pavements, but I gave the, uh, the cafe acoustic version. Which has a little more a little more rhythm to it, even though it's acoustic. And uh, what I love too is that um, we got in this uh, this conversation about uh, a creativity and sim similar to our uh, uh, a jock conversation in terms of like when can you create when you're an artist and you're usually depressed. Like if things aren't uh, or things are going well, you aren't writing beautiful music. And yeah. um, and it just reminded me that this came off her album, uh, her 19 album, so it's super early and. Um, and this is the album that her ex-boyfriend tried to sue her because he thought he should get uh, he should get money for inspiring all the lyrics of being an asshole to her. <laughs> if 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 there was a precedent set by that situation, the number <laughs> of musicians who would have to write checks to exes or or horrible others i think that uh, that could be a that could be really opening a giant box of snakes oh, absolutely <laughs> and just imagine if you're dating someone and you're not really that into it but a great <laughs> musician a pretty good musician is like i'm gonna be a dick for the next year gonna, for sure i'm, I'm gonna make her fucking hate me <laughs> i'm gonna get rich <laughs> Where are you going? Um, uh, I went with. Um, I, I tried to. I tried to be a little more contemporary, and it's a band I, I. I like. I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm not super crazy about what I call whoa oh bands, where, <laughs> where a, a genre of um, of of music, contemporary um, hipster musicians, where there's a lot of whoa oh -ohs in the. <laughs> In the chorus or the pre-chorus, it just seems like the whoa seems to be a big uh, a big part of it. But um, they are they do meet all the criteria of a whoa band. But I like them a lot. Uh, I picked uh, Cleopatra by the Lumineers, and I think it's I think it's a great song. I think it carries well, and uh, I think it's got um, it's a bit more of a listening song maybe than a than a background patio song. But I got to. Um, uh lumineers um were the last band i saw actually um before all of this craziness in march of last year where'd and, you see them uh, um <laughs> i'm not prone to doing this but i i, I saw them at the uh, air canada center a, a, a friend uh, a friend uh invited me uh and uh, i love the show and the backup act actually also makes it onto the list here tonight too which is mount joy and while they are similar in style um just the musicianship i think is fantastic and 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 there's a lot of whoa in both to be honest with you but uh, they both made the cut so there we go hey talk about the mount joy one because i uh did you know mount joy before you went to that concert yeah yeah okay because i i'd never heard of them before you threw them on the list and i took a look and I, i'm a fan yeah, I, I was first drawn to um, a, a single of theirs um, that I that I like called Astro Van. Um, yeah, and something it, about Jesus driving in an Astro Van. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, I think I was drawn to the title more because it's the ugliest of all multi multi persons <laughs> automobiles is the Astro Van. But, you, you better have a kid playing soccer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um but um yeah you know they're they're uh, um both the musicianship is uh is certainly acoustic based 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 and uh and uh both terrific bands actually so i think they met the criteria and, and i just think the the song the songs work they they um they uh, they kind of ruled along Cleopatra. Uh, I, I mean, uh, again, if you're looking at it thematically, it's it's uh, um, uh, it's uh, strong woman oriented, and I think that um, Melissa is definitely that. And uh, I like the power position of um, uh, of the uh, 
of the of the song and its content. So that's why that's why I rolled with it. Well, I think you described it perfectly because uh, when uh, the guy in the band actually describes the song, he says uh, he said Cleopatra is the uh, the bedrock of the album. Uh, she drives taxis and is this badass lady. She'll pick you up at the airport with a cigarette hanging out of her mouth and a beer can between her legs. There you go. There you go. So, so welcome to the patio. That's a powerful <laughs> image. Yeah, powerful absolutely. Image. Where are you going? Hey, um, once again, grunge, Stone Temple Pilots. Mm. And since it was patio version, I went with their acoustic version, which I absolutely love. And I absolutely love when these these bands, these power bands, uh, they strip things down and it's gorgeous. Absolutely sure. gorgeous, you know? Um, and I, you know, um, you know, everyone knows this song and it's just unbelievable um, in many of its versions, but I do like the, uh, the story of the band and you, we would appreciate this because in the early days they had a Winnebago. That's how they went to, uh, as you they know, were out of the van. I like a Winnebago. <laughs> they were out of the, the van. They graduated to Winnebago, but they had to pull a trailer with all their equipment in the back. So, you know, they were actually probably making more than a hundred bucks a show. They could actually afford a Winnebago and a trailer on top of that. But things were so cramped in the Winnebago that um, oftentimes one of the band members needed to go away. So he, he would be in the trailer. And uh, for this song, the guitar player, I forget his name, but... Uh, he, Safety uh, is they, always the first thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, they still talked, even though he wanted to get away. They had a walkie-talkie system. Oh, okay. So he created the music for this in the back of the trailer, uh, really inspired on one long road trip, and then uh, had uh, played it for them over the walkie-talkie really? in, in the Winnebago, yeah. Okay, that's damn cool. You know, so for our next road trip for our golf tournaments, uh, we will have a trailer as well, I think. <laughs> you know, I would like that. There's a few <laughs> candidates who would be uh, punished by uh, being put into the trailer. And, but no walkie-talkies. <laughs> no, no. Once you're out, you're out. <laughs> I like the version you picked. Uh, I like songs um, that get stripped right down to the wood and and uh and rebuilt they're kind of given a second opportunity and i think um i, I listened to the to the version you uh you chose and, and uh, i do like it a lot it's great great pick terrific pick terrific pick. where where are you going um still still with canada um uh a band uh, a band um uh originally from red deer alberta um mm -hmm. rouge mm -hmm. who uh who, who's they're they're ebbing and flowing a bit. I think they've got some great upside potential, some superb um, writing, some 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 great vocals, and uh, and and a great great band, husband and wife team actually. And uh, the the song I chose for uh, was uh, I heard I had, which I just I just you know it's um, it, it has enough low end to compete over the din of conversation. But it also has enough of a drive that uh, that you know, if you knew it, you would still enjoy enjoy it peripherally, instead yeah. of having to have it you know right in your face. It's one that you could, you know, it's one that you'd order another drink for. Yeah, exactly. I, and I, I I concur with you. The um, there's a nice little build to it, you know, the start, mm. and then it ramps up, and then it comes yeah. down again. But uh, I, I think it's a great song. Um, I'm not sure how I got stuck. Oh, I know. This my next selection is a little mom, uh, a nod to Mama Tancredi. And oh. this is about this is about their house with the intercon system with music always going all throughout the house. Mama, Mama Tancredi was the DJ. She controlled the music. And, uh, and when we asked about what music she played and, and Melissa was like, uh, she mentioned a lot of groups, but in excess was in there, Guns and Roses. And I'm like, well, well, well done. So I threw on Guns N' Roses and of course the unplugged version uh, and uh, I did Patience for this and um, um, okay I don't know yes. so so this this is a nod to Mom and her good music taste that she filled the uh, the Ten Credit House with so um, yeah so <laughs> Guns N' Roses it is um, I could see, I could see that work and uh, now I'm just jealous that we didn't have a PA system in our house we had a laundry chute. But we didn't have really? a PA system. Really? <laughs> and Which did you was go really down the just, laundry chute? 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, like the laundry chute was just an amusement park ride that was built into the structure of the house. It was a beauty. Um, it is a, 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 a significant, but it's a step away from a fireman's pole, but definitely it, it does the same kind of trick. Exactly. Uh, what do you got? <laughs> I'm bringing it right down to slow. I'm, I'm taking it down to a bossa nova beat and I'm bringing to you um, uh, a Brazilian reference. Um, I went with um, the classic uh, Stan Getz um, with vocals by uh, uh, Astrid uh, Gilberto, um, the girl from Ipanemia. Mm -hmm. The reasons for that are, A, it's a damn cool song. Yep. It's timeless. It's got such a fucking great groove. And, um, and uh, I leveraged the connection to um, Brazilian soccer. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, the great tradition, uh, both um, women's and men's in the country. And, uh, and I, just, I just felt it was, uh, if I was on a patio, um, that would be, I would be damn happy to hear that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bit of a shot out of the blue. It doesn't necessarily mesh with any of my other selections, but I love it. Yeah, but we know that she does love salsa and merengue, and so it's it's obviously not that. But no, you know, it's a slow it's, burn. Yeah, the bossa yeah. nova. It's and it's a really slow burn bossa nova. It's not. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's nothing that uh, Elvis would get excited about. But uh, but the um, the arrangement and and just that beautiful vocal. It's just it's perfect. It's yeah. a perfect song. Yeah, and I don't know if you know, but I'm. Pretty sure it was a semifinal game. I might have been the quarterfinal game, but uh, in Brazil, I know uh, our friend Melissa scored two goals in the in one of those games. So I, I did a little bit of uh, YouTubing to make sure it was accurate <laughs> with with a reference there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we're getting into the big time Melissa wheelhouse, Ooh. Um, Ooh. and and we're throwing it back to 1999 when uh, in high school playing for the Burlington Sting. Won the national championship, Canadian championship, nice. and their song was "My Love Is Your Love" by Whitney Houston, and um, and I had to obviously refresh my memory with this. But um, co-writers, a uh, co-writers and co-producers were the Fugees. No way. Really? Yeah, Wyclef, Wyclef Jean was involved in this. That's why when you listen to it, it has a, it, and you go, mm, I can see there's a few uh, Fugees uh, influence there. So. Um, so yeah, like Whitney Houston, fantastic. And, uh, and that was, uh, she also said that was uh, like win the national championship one day and then prom the next day with little weekend. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so there we go. And, and my next couple are, are right up that alley. So uh, please give us a break because I've got a bunch of powerhouse women on your way. Well, um, I'm going to give you some uh, stinky men and uh uh, Canadian musical icons in their own right. And um, when, when I was uh, checking out some of um, Melissa's video portfolio, um, I did uh, come upon a, uh, a cool side-by-side -side interview. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and I thought with Jim Cuddy from Blue Rodeo. And I thought that's mm -hmm. kind of a neat, a neat mesh. And uh, so um, again, you know, picking from their vast catalog and and knowing that we wanted what we wanted to do for for a patio i went with uh, try yeah which has which has in 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 its name has some uh has some um let's say a competitive connotation yeah but uh great song of course you know the masters of uh of uh of their uh of their of their genre there for canadian music for sure just a terrific band I'm going to make you so happy because it's Mariah Carey time. Oh, my God. <laughs> Always I mean, be my baby. It must, it, it, it must have occurred to you that, that when, we had, when we were speaking to Melissa and, uh, and she was very gracious with me, um, I relate to virtually none of the music that she loves. None. And, it's, and, it's, and I'm sure that it's more, um, it's obviously a generational thing. Mm -hmm. because it's not that I don't like popular music it's just that when like I'm 18 years older than her sure. or so, 
so so there's there's going to be a little bit of a gap i like that we crossed over with the, with the grungy stuff oh, you that saved you <laughs> and that got me out of a lot of trouble but um but uh there you go R roll with it um well well mariah, mariah carey i i connect to absolutely uh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's nothing, nothing about her catalog that I have ever liked. And I've been stuck in Shoppers Drug Mart listening to that Christmas song so many times. I, I honest to God, I just want to find a sharp syringe and just plunge it into my eye when I hear um, her Christmas stuff. If she has something that redeems, hit me with what the song is. I'd love to, because I, I didn't listen to it. I, 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 uh, I took a pass on, uh, on firing. Well, here's out. a. A little known fact that I think you might know now is that she does have more number one singles than Elvis Presley. Okay. <laughs> I love your I love your reputation of the facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah. When okay. Then, then then let's get if if you want to break if you want to get get down to some some uh, key performance indicators if we're going to go down that way when elvis was putting out number one songs what percentage of the american population had access to radios or access to purchasing records very few at that time when 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 mariah comes along and i'm not discounting her very obvious i mean like she's been around forever Mm -hmm. staying power for sure like, yeah ab absolutely is it you know the criteria for a number one record has changed drastically between the 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 mid 1950s and whenever she was pop most popular in the mid 90s so i'm not taking it away from her i'm just saying that the the, the playing field is not level to to suggest that and i'm not coming out in elvis's big defense because the music industry has ebbed and flowed and changed in so many different ways i don't think that statistically they are comparable i will give you that but um as a big fan of Shit's creek um i believe that dan levy and i would like to um categorically uh say that you're wrong on everything mariah so what's your next selection um i'm, I'm coming down to the end uh, and and I, I mentioned uh, Mount Joy before, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I went with uh, Jenny Jenkins, and uh, for no other reason than um, than uh, it's 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 got a little bit of a a little bit of a horse trot um, rhythm to it, and uh, and I thought that'd be cool in a patio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great it, song. And thanks a, for it, introducing me that to that band. I, that band I, I listened to cool. it last night. Yeah um and it's not the it's not the happiest song uh for sure i mean lyrically it, it it connects really well um i i just like um i like the the uh um uh i, I sort of like i like the um i like the way the way it rings and i just think it would be if, if we're talking patio you can't have too much deep end through through a whole song it's got to kind of dance around a little bit and for and, and that song does it yeah it does I, I i think it's lovely and um we had to throw in celine dion which i know you love um but uh i don't i don't technically i don't have anything against i and i don't honestly i just i can't get past the super creepy relationship between her her young self and her future husband slash manager it's just something i know it's, as yeah. the dad of a daughter it just it, it, it honest to god my skin crawls and this is not this has nothing to do with her obvious yeah. appeal on a broad scale yeah I, 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 just because i don't get it and 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 look let's let's piece piece the puzzle together obviously anyone who can hit multiple octaves doesn't appeal to me anybody with skilled <laughs> operatic voice anybody who can who can cover that much musical territory vocally well, just, freddie mercury then you don't like freddie of course i like, like freddie mercury but but um I, I but freddie mercury isn't covering the range that those two are he's got a sweet spot that he understood very very well and played it well but um but uh it doesn't freddie never had that dog whistle decibel level that just gets really deep under your skin but i want to well, know about the song what what what, what uh, 
maybe well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm maybe I'm going to discover something today. So uh, I, I I picked the Carol King uh, King, uh, Carol King one. Uh, you make me oh. feel like a natural woman, right? Uh, and that, that was, was good. That yeah. was a big pick for her. Yeah, and um, and I just love um, when we asked Melissa in our first conversation about who you um, uh, would you like to uh, hang out with or have dinner with someone that you've always wanted to meet. And she chose Celine Dion. It's like, yeah, I, I, I would definitely like to meet Celine, uh, Celine Dion. And, um, and she actually said, I think it'd be fun to go shoe shopping with her. That was a good <laughs> line. I like that. I mean, I, I thought it was very funny that she would choose such an, uh, a normative activity. <laughs> no, absolutely. But to, to actually if, if I be was, shoe shopping with her and, and for Celine to see a beautiful pair of shoes and go, whoa, you know, like, <laughs> come on, that's who you're looking for. <laughs> And I love that she said, oh, we just go shoe shopping. A um, couple of things there. Uh, if, I was, if I was to spend any time with, with a famous musician, I'd probably want them to uh, do a little monkey dance. Like I'd want to sit down at a piano or a guitar or a zither or whatever the hell they played and yeah. maybe jam it out a little bit. I don't think my first reaction is, hey, do you like shoes? <laughs> I like shoes. Let's go. You know, I, I think that's, <laughs> you know, what the hell? Well, actually, you know what? It's I fun. think they're ex they're expecting you to to go down that path. So I think yeah. throw them off with the shoes, and then hopefully you get that happenstance little sing along in the middle of the mall. Well, here, here's what it, it, here's what occurred to me. Um, that rang to me. It, it it read when she was telling the story. I thought it was great. It it it, it read a lot like um, like a a segment from Colbert or something like that from a, from a, or Kimmel or something like that, you know, where, where it's uh, shoe shopping with Celine Dion or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you could, and, 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 you know, for you late night producers out there, put Tancredi in, uh, <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and the, the Canadian songbird together, let's get this thing going. I think that would make a great segment shoe shopping with Celine I think we Dion. just, we figured out how to monetize the show. We just sold uh, sold my there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hey, you uh, did you do the Johnny Cash? Did you do Hurt? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, mean, that was, I, I was too yeah, sure. Yeah, I think I did a little little bad copy and paste on that uh, on the action. You and I have discussed that song before, and yeah. and it's um and and you cannot listen to that song and not really get caught up in it in mm -hmm. the end of life proposition by johnny cash the content of the song i mean the, the the writing of course is brilliant even in its first um iteration it was a by by any stretch a great song but it is so painfully presented that uh that it's it's just it's um it's uh, 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 what did Tom Waits say? He, he, he like beautiful melodies telling him terrible things. <laughs> and, uh, I love that. Yeah, and that is that. That is exactly what it is. So yeah. I think you, you and I, you and I doubled down on that one. I think we both we both had that yeah. one. But I'm sure that you came up with that one, that one first. I love your 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 choice of it. I think it's fantastic. Hey, um, and I don't think we mentioned this, but her friend, her business partner, and. Uh, and, uh, and she played soccer with her, Selenia. Uh, I asked her a few uh, before, I remember I, I said, oh, I got some inside information of questions to ask uh, Melissa and, and her love of Boney M as the Christmas, uh, the Christmas <laughs> album that's in the shop all the time. And, uh, but, um, uh, and I was expecting when I asked her about concerts and like who you wanna see next and who have you seen, she never did mention Lionel Richie, but she's seen Lionel Richie three times. So, oh. so I thought I'd throw in a little stuck on you because I know she does love Lionel Richie, and and it would it's a That's it's a good, a good patio song, you know, like That's a great. I, 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 you know, and and here's I will drop the Mariah thing, and I will drop uh, Whitney and all these. Uh, yeah. But the thing is, I remember it was last the last time I traveled. I was in L.A. and uh, staying near Abbott Kinney, and. Um, early morning coffee and uh and the cafe was playing mariah carey and everyone was so happy sure so you know just like lionel richie you're going to hear that it's like i'm happy now yeah i think i mean let's be honest if i had to choose you know i'm going with lionel 
but don't let my ignorance get in your way. <laughs> it's not your ignorance. It is the Chris rules. <laughs> my, my very stern <laughs> adherence to to uh, to uh, that. I, honestly, I'd probably have a greater tolerance if it wasn't for that Christmas song that starts on November 1st. Um, <laughs> I, I may be a little more open-minded, but... Um, I've got one more to go. How many, uh, uh, do you have anything else more. you wanna? I have one more, and and again, I'm I'm going back to the Canadian catalog, because I think, and 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 and, and Canadian women for that matter, because I think that there's something going on in Canadian music scene where where, and we mentioned it before, that um, women like Carol Pope paved the way, and, and I'm not talking about the about the the saucy content that that um, that Carol was presenting very powerful for its time. Um, I, I went with um, this, uh, this young woman, um, Alicia Cara. I'm not sure if you're, if you're familiar mm -hmm. with her. She's, mm -hmm. she's not in my wheelhouse, but, um, but by virtue of uh, my daughter, just um, moving back home for a little bit now, um, I went with, um, with her, her song, Wild Things, which, I, which I've listened to a bunch of times now. And it's a damn good song. I mean, she's got a bunch of good ones. I just chose that one. I realized it's a, it is by all measure her, a hit of hers. But um, I thought it fit our parameters. Well, and it also fits in with uh, the Tancredi household. Yeah. She's, a, she's a good little kid from Calabria. <laughs> you know, the Calabrian pants. Yeah. She's got a little spicy, spicy yeah. uh, nature I, I, to her. I noticed, you know? I noticed the vowel on the end of the name. I don't have one. <laughs> I was the only kid in high school who didn't. Well, I got, I got two more, and I'll do them quickly. Yeah, um, in my chat with, uh, with Melissa, we, well, the second chat we had, uh, we were talking about concerts, and I was talking about um, um, when I went and saw Prince. And what a game changer that was for me coming from my small town yeah. and uh, 16 years old Purple Rain tour um, at Maple Leaf Gardens yeah. in the middle of a school week. Like, yeah. I'm not exactly sure how I pulled all this off. And um, but I actually remember sitting there, um, eyes open. I'm like, and I remember saying to Melissa, I said, I, I think I had this feeling like the, the underlying feeling that I had is like, this is allowed. Like, I've never seen a, a, a man. Right be like that on stage with high right. heels and and wow. just the just dripping with sex sex mm -hmm. sex sex you know and um and she was talking and i asked her i said did anyone change your your perspective or your view or did you see anyone you're like Phew. and her answer was when she was in chicago she saw rihanna and rihanna rihanna had um uh the the stage was all glass and they had cameramen underneath the stage so there was there was cameras from every angle and she was like, I'm not sure if I should be watching this. Like it was, it was just a wild thing. And then, um, and, and this is also a nod to her mom who loves the Beatles, but Melissa doesn't really like the Beatles. So we're all in the same, same camp here. Uh, and uh, four or five seconds, which I love. And I made the mistake that, you know, one of my favorite small country bands is Fairground Saints that I discovered, we discovered in Nashville. And, um, they, put, they have the song in their album. So when I heard this, I'm like, oh my God, they covered that song and it was vice versa. That was uh, Paul McCartney plays bass on this and a co-writer. And mm -hmm. uh, it is, it's okay. uh, Rihanna and Kanye West and uh, Paul McCartney. And there's about 18 other writers in this. So I'm not sure how this song came to be, but it, <laughs> it's just a good little song. And I thought of Rihanna and I just thought of the, the good story that, that Melissa shared. So, um, and then my last selection is uh, we knew that, um, that uh, Melissa loves uh, salsa and merengue and loves to dance. So I threw in a Mark Anthony song, you know, and How can um, you wrong? yeah, like I don't know the world of salsa that much. So I just thought a uh, pretty obvious choice. And yeah, I don't know. He's a, he's a good kid that came from nothing and uh, ended yeah. up marrying JLo and movie star. And I don't know, uh, you got to tip your cap to that guy. Cause he has made it. Yeah, he, he he covered a lot of ground. I think I think that he he found a sweet spot and stuck to it, and um, and uh, you don't you don't hear a lot about the tragic end. And I think I'm I'm going to go back and reference um, both uh, Whitney Houston and and Mariah. I mean, I, I think that you could agree, and most would, the incredible tragic waste that is the death of Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. Her her musical catalog. I remember it was probably 1983 
when I first saw the video for um, "Saving All My Love for You." Yeah, and she came on to the she came on to uh, the scene as as just two parts, like a bit of an unstoppable force, Ridicu- ridiculously beautiful. Yeah, like by all measure, and this powerhouse voice, and she had this incredible career, obviously from a from a gospel background. And um, uh, and and uh, I think niece niece of Dion Warwick. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to have this incredible career and and just so, that terrible terrible downfall mm-hmm. and the spiral and, and 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 for what it's worth, Mariah Carey has 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 managed to to come in and out, and I don't follow her, but in my head, she's probably had a lot of pretty crazy ups and downs too mm-hmm. yep none is none as tragic as uh, obviously is the end to to Whitney Houston and I, I think it gets it, it, the, the, it gets even worse as you compound with with the, the the death of the daughter in exactly the same way which is just just yeah. you can't even write a horrible story like that yeah yeah so so, so I, I I don't I don't uh, I don't mean to come out um as aggressively disliking their music um it's it's not my time or my place but i think i think i'm more disturbed by your top th- by elements of your top three picks by Rene angelil's bizarre relationship with celine dion the terrible tragic end to whitney houston and the what seems to me to be a roller coaster ride um for Mariah Carey, and and uh, I I understand that she's she's had some some trouble with mental illness and stuff like that. So that's always tough. To, um, very very difficult situation. I'm glad she survived, but it's uh, that. Uh, but uh, f- for those reasons, um, I I will defend them. But um, but uh, yeah, never never linked to the music. Does that shock you? <laughs> no, it does not shock me at all. No no no, no. and in fact I. I um I, I knew that I, I knew that I would take the reins on uh, on on. Uh, <laughs> I knew on that this. five minutes into Melissa's interview, <laughs> <laughs> and I knew you'd fill it in with. Uh, I, I knew that I was ballast in the first thirty <laughs> seconds of that conversation musically, <laughs> and that pretty much wraps up our show. Um, a big thanks to our friend Melissa Tancredi, gave us a lot of time and. Gave us a lot of um, a lot of good chatter about life and music, and a bit of insight of of what life is like in the uh, in the world of elite soccer, world class soccer. And um, so, if you want to check out the playlist, they're now available on uh, we have it on Amazon and Spotify and iTunes, and all the links are on the website, theRourkeMix.com. So. We'll be back in a week or so with another guest and uh, making another mixtape and and we'd love to see you back. So thank you very much and we'll we'll see you later. <laughs>